If this isn't proof that it's totally okay not to be married by 30, I'm in the Sahara Desert with 18 incredible women about to go ride camels in the sunset. Um, I'm just having a really hard day. I'm trying to get ready. That women tend to be happier when they are single. I could have married a lot of the people that I've dated. Okay, I turned 40 this year and I've never been in love. I've never been in a relationship. If you hear something, or an update about your ex and it just kills you. Women tend to be happier, ha ha happier when they are single. Struggling financially, being alone, having no one there to talk to as you age, you know, no kids. And I always thought I would have kids. I thought I would be married by now. And now I, the closer I get to it and I'm scared. I don't, I don't know. I didn't think it would be an issue of 32 years old. I'm 53. I would like to think that I'm still young, right? The fact that you're 40 and single, still with no children, and now you find out that she's eight weeks pregnant, and you so want to feel happy for her, but inside, <laughs> inside you feel so sad. Ha ha happier when they are single. I'm in the stage of life where I'm watching all my friends get married and have babies, and you know that at 40, you're running out of time and soon you won't have a choice at all. No choice at all. That should really be the slogan of this generation's feminists because all of this screaming, I don't need a man, is starting to have some real world consequences and it's not pretty. I also feel like I'm getting older and it's like I have to put some effort into dating or I'm just going to be alone forever but now I'm just honestly getting to the point where I'm just going to be the single aunt. But like it's really hard when like I don't have I don't really have anyone to go to like on a Friday night. I am 30 years old and I have been single for over 12 years so never had a real adult relationship. Maybe I should just give up. But I don't know. Then I feel like if I give up, then it's like, then I'm totally throwing the towel in and like, that sounds and feels sad. These feminists are literally marching modern women down a disastrous path of pain and loneliness, all under the banner of quote unquote helping women. But the reality is, when you ignore basic facts and continue to sell a lie to women, then eventually they will catch on and realize that it's not benefiting them at all. But really, this is crazy. It's been a rough month for me. And I got cold. Uh. <laughs> Somebody help me. I'm so tired of being an independent woman sometimes. Sometimes, like, I just want to be taken care of. You know, my whole life, I've just been so independent. Yep care for what you wish for. So you see, you are now getting a whole new generation of 30 and 40 year old women who are just now realizing that everything they were promised by modern feminism was complete bullshit and they are not living their best lives at all. There is no shame in not wanting to climb the ladder. I, I don't want to be independent. Yeah. Exactly. This independent life is just, I'm horrible. tired, I'm so tired. I am tired, how am I doing eight to five and I'm, I'm tired. Tired. <laughs> and I'm still broke. You are gonna be alone you're not gonna have a family. Like, I don't wanna wake up at, you know, 60 by myself. And people go home to their families or partners or whatever, and you go home to an empty house. Please drop a like on the video if you think that modern feminism cares more about hurting men than actually benefiting women. For a woman over 35, the first hurdle is often infertility. So we look at the curve, and then you're mid 30s and it takes a dive. And old age in women really is in your late 30s, early 40s, as far as ovarian age is concerned. Despite the bombardment of feminist propaganda, women still show time and time again that they deeply want to have kids and that they are not happy or fulfilled at all with just climbing the corporate ladder. I don't want a job. I don't want to be a corporate girly. I don't want to climb the ladder. I don't want to be a boss babe. I don't want to do any of that. I don't want to be the breadwinner. I do not want to do that. You know what I want to do? I want to be home. And I'm just wondering, am I the only person like completely struggling? Am I the only one? Because I've been single a very long time. I'm 28 years old, I have a degree. I'm not doing anything with that degree currently. I just want to live comfortably and 
be happy and have the time to pursue my hobbies and my passions outside of work. I mean, she's basically describing being a stay-at-home mom with a small side business, allowing her to do whatever she loves to do, but she's not getting it. I feel like there's gotta be jobs that I'm just not thinking of. Telling women to press pause on having a family or finding a man might sound great in theory, but it does not work out in real life. Because just like the lie of being able to press pause on your puberty by means of chemical castration, you cannot press pause on your fertility, especially not in the way they are selling it to modern women. And I have decided before my 30th birthday, I'm going to freeze my eggs. Okay, I'm turning 30 in three months, 90 days from today. And so I figured since I'm still single, it's probably a good idea to consider freezing my eggs. Freeze your eggs. Freeze your eggs as early as you possibly can. Egg freezing has become a social media trend with hundreds of paid influencers promoting and luring women into a very lucrative business model with the belief that they can just party well into their 30s, then freeze some eggs and still have a bunch of kids later on. I also want to inspire anybody who is watching this who had been considering freezing their eggs or taking control of their own fertility, I want to inspire you to do the same. Injecting myself twice a day in order to freeze my eggs as a 37-year-old woman who is single with no man in sight. They make women believe that egg freezing is some sort of insurance plan. There's been a lot of buzz about egg freezing being a kind of insurance policy. And I woke up and realized that absolutely I wanted that insurance policy. Yeah. It isn't. It is a medical procedure. It is not without risk. Equally, there's no absolute guarantee that they're going to get a live birth out of this. When they call you and tell you that none of them worked, like, you know, like they're mature, but like when you actually do the testing after making embryos, like I, in theory, could have nothing. I think they even used the word discarded. They said they're, they've all been discarded. Okay, well, thank you for letting me know. It sounds nice and makes them feel all warm and fuzzy inside. However, when you ignore the social media hype and just look at the actual numbers, things start to look a lot more depressing. I really thought this process would like slow down my biological clock and I wouldn't feel as much pressure. And I feel way more pressure now. So, you know, over 37, 38, the egg quality will not be as good as it once was, and many women may be actually freezing their infertility. We'll get back to the disaster state of egg freezing coming up in part two, which you can find now in the description below this video. If you agree with this video, please smash the like and share this video with your friends and subscribe.